Hello everyone. The highly anticipated SGP 3132 eSIM standards for IoT are just around the corner. They are generating excitement across the industry. These new standards have the potential to transform IoT connectivity, but they also raise important questions for organizations and other stakeholders. To help you understand these changes, Semtech has partnered with Counterpoint Research to bring you a four-part video series. In each episode, we will dive into the key aspects of SGP 3132 and answer some of the pressing questions surrounding the new standards. For today's session, I am your host Mohit Agrawal, and with me I have Rupa Datta, who heads Global Cellular IoT Connectivity at Semtech, which you may have previously known as Sierra Wireless. And I also have Varun Gupta, my colleague at Counterpoint Research, who leads the eSIM research at Counterpoint. Let me start with you, Varun. Can you explain the new starts uh, that are coming in for eSIM for IoT? And also talk about what is the need for the for the new standards. So thank you, Mohit. Uh, so eSIM technology was introduced to replace the traditional SIM cards uh, with a more flexible and remotely manageable solution. Uh, so back in 2014, GSMA launched the new eSIM standard called eSIM uh, IoT M2M standard, uh, also known as SGP.02. Uh, which uh, was designed to implement uh, into the industrial and IoT applications. However, this uh, came with a complex architecture called SMSR, uh, Subscription Manager Secure Routing, which is used for doing the profile downloads and swaps in the IoT constrained devices. And this particular architecture was not so suitable for the consumer uh, devices. And hence, a new standard was born called SGP22, the Consumer eSIM standard, which was um, more flexible in terms of the profile downloads and it gives gives the user more control over the direct profile downloads. And uh, it was uh, more easier to implement in devices such as smartphones, smartwatches, tablets, and PC. While uh, in the adoption in consumer uh, devices have been uh, growing rapidly, uh, the same is not true with the IoT devices uh, because of the complex architecture, it made it more costly and inefficient to be deployed under uh, IoT applications which require low power consumption and large scale uh, deployments. So the new standard, which is the eSIM uh, uh, IoT standard uh, called SGP32 is a more simple, secure and scalable solution designed for such IoT deployments. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the history on eSIM for IoT. Can you also share some insights on the adoption of eSIM in IoT today and which are the key verticals where we have seen the higher adoption? Right, Mohit. So in 2024, uh, we have seen that about 15% of the cellular IoT modules were eSIM capable. And uh, the lower adoption is because of the fact that uh, the architecture is more complex and there are also ecosystem challenge, uh, such as the regulatory barriers in China. Now, China is uh, the largest market when it comes to uh, the IoT deployments uh, and also the sh uh, share of IoT connections is very much high as compared to the global counterparts. Hence, uh, the lower adoption over there has meant that the ecosystem itself has suffered in terms of the eSIM adoption. So when it comes to the applications, we see that smart meters, automotive and asset trackers are the applications which have adopted eSIM uh, for the IoT M2M standards. However, we have also seen that some automakers are utilizing SGP22's capabilities in adopting eSIM for their connected cars, which is more simple to adopt and easier to implement as well. Well, it's pretty interesting to note that some of the players are already using the consumer eSIM standards instead of the M2M. Uh, and you mentioned that it's easier to implement and it's more scalable. So Rupa, if I can turn to you and ask you, uh, can you elaborate on uh, why there is so much of excitement about the new standards uh, that are coming in? And can you also explain what are some of the key advantages of SGP 3132? Sure. So uh, to date, what we've seen with our customers is there's great excitement around not being locked into a connectivity provider for a long period of time. So what we see is with the new eSIM standards with 32, the combination of the O2 IoT and 22 consumer, that customers can freely make the choice of a uh, connectivity provider without thinking about what do I do five years later after my contract or 20 years later as some of these devices, you, you mentioned the smart meters, are out in the market. So with SGP32, not only can customers sort of pull the the 
uh, profiles into their devices, not just one profile, but potentially many profiles. So the flexibility of this whole solution makes it very much in a way easier for customers because they don't feel like they have to be set on one decision, but it also makes the landscape quite complex. Many profiles, what does it mean? I Can I you know, push these or pull these profiles to my devices easily? What does the network look like and what sort of integrations do I need? So although there is simplicity down the road, I think uh, many organizations are struggling with how do I get there? And I think the, the questions that are coming from our customers, OEMs, organizations, I think we're seeing a lot of that in the landscape. Also, you know, by virtue of so many MNOs and MVNOs trying to talk about this topic so aggressively in the market today also proves that there is a conversation there that needs to be simplified. Completely agree with you that the new standards bring in the flexibility for the customers and prevent a vendor lock-in. I understand that the new standards bring eSIM capabilities to constrained devices. Varun, you have been tracking the IoT market. Uh, can you can you talk uh, about how large is the is the constrained devices segment and how SGP 3132 will be a game changer over there? Right. Uh, so Mohit, uh, these constrained devices, which are usually powered by NB IoT and LPWA, uh, accounts for about 20% of the global cellular IoT connections. And uh, the, the demand for these uh, devices have been growing and a lot of regions are implementing it once their networks are capable enough. And this these technologies are actually uh, very ideal for uh, applications such as smart meters, asset trackers, and agriculture sensors, because these devices require long range connectivity, more security, and more scalability. And the demand for these devices is definitely increasing. Uh, we have seen uh, such devices in demand for uh, regions such as India, Southeast Asia, and Mid Middle East, which are rolling out uh, these uh, devices in large numbers. And when it comes to Europe and North America, so they already have a large installed base for these devices. And they are about uh, at the end of their life. So they are going to be replaced with devices that are capable with the NB-IoT and LTEM technology. Now with the SGP32, uh, what benefit it comes with is the EIM, which is the eSIM IoT Remote Manager, which is a more decentralized control over the profile swaps and the profile downloads as compared to the centralized control of the SMSR. Hence, this is more suitable for such large scale deployments. So if a significant part of the market is uh, these constrained devices, and if uh, the new standards make it easy for the constrained devices uh, to, to adopt eSIM, I'm sure the market is eagerly waiting for the new standards. Uh, Rupa, when do you think the new standards will be commercially available? And what, uh, what the organizations need to think about the uh, cost implications, if there are any? Yeah, I think the we know that the full standards are due to be published sometime early this year, which is probably and really soon. Um, we see from a Semtech perspective that our deployment is going to happen mid-year in 2025, so we're excited about that. Are there cost implications? I think it, it yes. So if you think about the remote provisioning and the bulk, bulk sort of uh, uploads of profiles to devices that are already online and in market somewhere. It, it's for, for customers or organizations that sort of have a problem of, hey, my devices are already out there in the market. How do I change to my connectivity provider? That simply goes away. So they're no longer waiting for the devices to come back to their factory. They're not no longer doing truck rolls. They're no longer getting hands-on devices. At this stage, what they'll be able to do is simply remotely push profiles in bulk to their devices that are already in field. So that is one example of a cost efficiency that they will be able to enjoy, as well as simplification of their IoT deployment. So Varun, uh, which sectors are likely to adopt the new standards first? And where do you see the big uh, growth opportunity coming in? Right, Mohit. So uh, in terms of the key industry sectors, we expect that smart meters, POS, asset trackers, and automotive are the sectors which are going to lead the eSIM adoption, especially with the SGP32 coming in. And in the near term, we expect that uh, automotive is a, as a sector will adopt the SGP32 more faster as compared to the other sectors because the demand for connected car is growing and automakers are seeking for more simple and effective solutions. Thanks, Varun. 
I'm sure that the automakers would like to change the complexity in managing the eSIMs. However, a big concern for all the OEMs is vendor lock-in. I know, Rupa, you talked about, about vendor lock-in in a previous question and that the advantage of the new standard is ability to avoid the vendor lock-in. Uh, but what can the service providers do in such a scenario? So, yes. So double-edged sword always, right? So for organizations, yes, it's easier to switch the service provider, but I think that it's on the service providers to make sure that the standard of connectivity and support that the, that the organizations are receiving is going to be higher impact for the customer. It's no longer about, do I have connectivity? It's about, do I have connectivity what is the uptime and what is the service and support I'm getting around it? So it's a little bit of a game changer from an MVNO or MNO space, I think. Um, but also, you know, from our perspective, this also makes it easier for customers to change connectivity providers to us. So, you know, two ways can they change providers? Yes. Um, you know, double edged sword in some ways, but good for the market and others. That's it for today's episode. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will have a guest from Keegan to talk about the technical aspects as well as uh, talk about navigating the multiple standards. Thank you.